Alright, what's happening everybody? It's your boy Akeen and welcome to today's vlog. Wrapping things up for the 2012-2013 college football season. Time to talk about tonight's main event, the national championship between number one Notre Dame against number two Alabama. Now there is a lot of history and tradition between these two schools. They're actually tied up with eight national championships apiece in their uh, respected histories. Actually nine altogether for the um, Crimson Tide. Now, in this matchup, if the Crimson Tide wins this game, this will be their third in four seasons, and this will be the seventh straight of national championship in which the winner will be coming out of the SEC Conference. Now, Notre Dame is looking to spoil that tradition and spoil Alabama's um, comeback season for the national championship. Now, for Notre Dame, this is their um, first national uh, BCS appearance since 2007, so they're trying to get back into the mix in the national spotlight in one of these biggest games, and this is the biggest game. The BCS National Championship. Now both teams are ranked among the best on the defense. Now I'm going to start with Alabama. They allow 10.7 points per game and they have a great second and third level and put positional players on that defensive side. With starting with the linebackers, Adrian Hubbard, six sacks and 39 tackles this season. All American CJ Mosley, 99 tackles, four sacks and a couple of picks. He's a great linebacker and the secondary amongst the best in the nation with Robert Lester, four interceptions, has Sean Clinton Dix four interceptions, two interceptions for Dee Milliner and of the cornerback slash safety, and Vinny Sinceri, who also has two interceptions. They are among the nation's best, and I think they do have the best secondary in college football, period. Now, for Notre Dame, they have a pretty good defense, ranked uh, the number one scoring defense in the nation. Um, actually going to start off with their front seven. Um, they have a great front seven. Start with the defensive end. Capro, Lewis Moore, six sacks, and stick Stephen um, to it. He actually leads the team with 12 sacks. He has stepped up a lot this season for that fight in Irish defense. And I need to talk about the linebackers. Starting with Prince Shimbo, seven and a half sacks this season. He's a good outside linebacker. An All-American and second in the Heisman Trophy ballot. Monte Te Maintai Teo, I have mentioned him throughout this season. 100 and one tackles, seven interceptions, was ranked second in the nation, and one and a half sacks. He's a great linebacker. He had a great career as a fighting Irish player. Now, they also have a good secondary player in Bennett Jackson, the cornerback, four interceptions to go along with 61 tackles. They have a stellar defense for the fighting Irish. Now, I'm going to hop over to the offensive side, starting with Alabama. They average 38.5 points per game, and they're led by quarterback A.J. McCarron. 2,669 yards pass. 26 touchdowns and three interceptions. Great touchdown um, interception ratio, and he is ranked in the top five in passing efficiency for quarterbacks in the nation. Now, they have 2,000 yards rushing this season with Eddie Lacy and T.Y. Yeldon. Both these two players combined for just under 2,200 yards rushing and 27 touchdowns. These two are bruising running backs. The speedster more belongs to T.Y. Yeldon, while the power running back is um, Eddie Lacy. He's a great player. He had a great game in that SEC championship. Same with Yeldon. And their leading receiver this year is Amari Cooper. 895 yards receiving and 9 touchdowns. He's a big target for A.J. McCarron. Now, offensively for Notre Dame, they're led by quarterback Everett Golson. He is just a sophomore. 2,135 yards passing, 11 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. Not as big stats at the quarterback position as A.J. McCarron, but like I said, he is just a sophomore. And they have a couple of two good running back tandem as well for the fight in Irish. Starting with all-purpose player Theo Reddick, just under 400 yards receiving, and he leads the team with 880 yards rushing, 4.9 yards per carry. And they have a home run threat of a running back in C. Air Wood, the second tandem of this one-two punch. He averages 6.7 yards per carry, 740 yards rushing this season. Their leading receiver is the Mackey Award winner for the best tight end, Tyler Effort, six, um, 624 yards receiving and four touchdowns. These two offenses are pretty. These two offenses are pretty good. I have to give the edge to Alabama, 38.5 points per game to just 26.8 points per game for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. So they have the edge out on the offensive side. Defensively, I'm going to actually go with Notre Dame because of their scoring defense and they do commit a lot of turnovers and good players in the first, second, and third level defense. Now, Alabama do has a good defensive li good defensive lineman like Damian Square. He's a great DL, but not as good as Notre Dame's Stephon Truitt, and they also have a good outside linebacker who I mentioned 
um, Prince of Shimbo. They have a, they have a good um, a, D line, a little bit better D line than Alabama. So I'm going to give the edge to uh, Notre Dame on their defense over Alabama. Now the keys for this game very important. Now I'm going to start with Alabama. They only have a couple, not too many. Offensively, they're just going to have to pound the rock and tear apart that Notre Dame defense. This is going to be key in this matchup, and they are very capable of doing that. That is exactly what they did in that SEC championship against Georgia. They're looking to pound that rock and just beat that defense apart. Going towards the end of the game, that defense is going to be tired out, which means they would give opportunities for the Alabama Crimson Tide offense to do well against that defense. That is going to be very important. On the defensive side, I have two things. First, they just mainly do, they cannot allow any, any big plays in this matchup. And that's what Notre Dame is going to be looking for in this game. No big plays. If they just keep the keep the, um, the big plays limited, not too many of them, they'll be okay and they should win the national championship. Secondly, they just need to put the ball in the hands of Ever Ghostens throwing ability. If they limit his amount in running the football, if they do not allow him to be as a good dual threat run a quarterback like he is, if they limit to him to just throwing the football, they should win this game. Because Everett Golson, like I said, 11 touchdowns this season, just 11 and 5 interceptions. Yes, he has not had to all the time at the quarterback position this year. He's been beaten on um, um, battling out that quarterback position against um, Tommy Reese. But still, Everett Golson is still not, not much experience at the quarterback. And if they put, if the Crimson Tide put the ball in his hands and throwing the football and limit his time and running the football, I think the Crimson Tide will be okay. Now for Notre Dame, I have a couple of more um big um keys for this this fight in Irish team. Offensively, first and foremost, they need to understand that they need to play SCC offensive football. Seriously, they cannot play no Big Ten football. They can't play even the Notre Dame football. They have to play aggressive and strong. Be, be um in their face and smash mouth football just like in the SEC conference. They have to be extremely aggressive in this matchup. That is exactly what Louisville did in the Sugar Bowl when they blasted Florida in that in that Sugar Bowl matchup. A quarterback Teddy Bridgewater just tore that um defense apart and they just was ramming everything right down their throat. They played very aggressive. They did not have that many big plays in that Sugar Bowl championship, but they just threw the ball effectively, play after play, just tearing apart that Florida defense. And that is exactly what Notre Dame is going to have to do against Alabama. Play after play, they just need to take their time and just tear them apart. Every time they get a good play, they need to get fired up, show their motivation, keep that that all that momentum going on the offensive side. Secondly, on the offensive side, it's very important. They, do, they cannot afford to turn the ball over and put their defense back on the field. They cannot have many three and outs. They're going to have to take the time of possession a lot on that offensive side. They cannot afford to put that defense back on the field. Now, just as I mentioned earlier, Alabama's looking forward to wearing and tearing that defense. If that defense continues to go back on the field because of the poor play offensively, Notre Dame is going to be in for a lot of trouble. Now, on the defensive side, the only important, the main, the main important thing that they need to do to win this game is all in that front seven, the battle of the line of scrimmage against that offensive line of Alabama. Barrett Jones. Cyrus Croncho, I mean, Truitt, Monte Teo, I, I'm Shimbo, they're going to have to win those battles against that great offensive line from Alabama. Alabama just tore Georgia apart in that SEC championship, and they need to do well. They just, Also, they need to commit to, um, turnovers in this matchup. That is another key um, component in this matchup for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And most importantly, for the offense, the defense, and the special teams, the entire team for the Fighting Irish, they cannot give Alabama any opportunities in this game. If they do, they will lose this matchup. That is exactly how Alabama beat LSU. That is how they beat Georgia in the SEC Championship. And that is even how they even made it to the National Championship. Remember back in early November where Notre Dame, Kansas State, and Oregon were all on the first one, two, and three in the AP rankings. But the, and all they had to do with two of those two teams, two of those three teams, all they had to do is remain undefeated, and they will play for the national championship. Notre Dame did their job, but Kansas State and Oregon. Oregon ended up losing one of their key matches. 
Oregon ended up getting beat at home against Stanford while Kansas State lost to Baylor. So Notre Dame cannot give Alabama any opportunities. If they do, they are going to lose this game. That's what Georgia did in the SEC Championship. When they gave Alabama opportunities, they just ran the ball right down the throat and scored touchdowns. That's how they lost. Notre Dame cannot lose, this, not lose that momentum and not give them any opportunities in this matchup. Now, for the winner of this game, I, even though I'm going to be rooting for the Fighting Irish, I want them to win. I'm still going to stick with the Crimson Tide in this one, only because their, off, their defense is way too much for Notre Dame's offense. I think the defense for Notre Dame can compete with the uh, SEC champion offense, but their offense cannot compete with the Crimson Tide's defense. And I think their defense for the Crimson Tide is going to be way too much for Notre Dame. So I'm going to have to go with Alabama over the Fighting Irish. Even though, as a fan, I'm going to be rooting for Notre Dame. I'm sick of seeing the SEC champion represent the national champion, and I'm really tired of just seeing too much of Alabama. It's time for us to see a new national champion. But I'm still going to stick with Alabama, but I'm going to be rooting for Notre Dame. Now, next time I catch you guys is going towards the end of the season. I might give you a recap of this game, but I'm really going to look towards to the Senior Bowl and the East-West Shrine game, and I will talk more going towards the 2013 NFL Draft. Thank you for watching today's vlog. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.